Solar geoengineering would be a very disruptive technology uh, to throw into an already chaotic world. So what is solar engineering? Well, the cause of global warming is the carbon dioxide from industrial activities that accumulates in the atmosphere. Solar geoengineering, rather than attacking the root cause, tries to compensate for the warming effect of carbon dioxide by putting particles in the atmosphere that reflect sunlight back to space and have a cooling effect on the surface. What could possibly go wrong with solar geoengineering? The main thing is that the energy input into the Earth's climate from absorbed sunlight acts on a very different part of the climate system from the warming effect of carbon dioxide. So there's all sorts of possibilities that deploying solar geoengineering will lead to massive disruptions in the Earth's circulation systems and unanticipated changes in the regional climate. What will happen to droughts? What will happen to floods? What will happen to, uh, to heat waves? What will happen to excessive cooling in various places? While the warming effect of carbon dioxide persists for thousands or even tens of thousands of years, the particles that you shoot up into the atmosphere to try to reflect back some sunlight and cool the climate, they fall out within at most a year or two. So that means that, uh, that you can't buy time for climate action on carbon dioxide by deploying solar geoengineering. The minute you stop the solar geoengineering, all that pent up warming comes back to hit you in the face in a matter of years to decades in a catastrophic rapid warming that we call termination shock. And that would be a truly perilous and catastrophic event uh, to uh, always have hanging over us as a risk. And so it means that if you get into a situation you where you rely on solar geoengineering uh, for survival, then you're committed to continuing to do it essentially forever. So it's just a situation we don't want to be in. Solar geoengineering would be a very disruptive technology uh, to throw into an already chaotic world. What happens if one country uh, thinks their climate is being clobbered by solar geoengineering, but another country uh, thinks that more solar geoengineering would be beneficial? There's all sorts of possibilities that the solar geoengineering would increase international tension to the point where you have actual wars over what the climate should be like. Is, is this another risk we want to unleash on an already unstable world? Solar geoengineering proponents often say, we're not talking about deployment. We're just talking about research. So what harm could research do? The big risk in research is that it's almost impossible to do expanded research without the, developing the technology that would make deployment possible. And once that technology is developed, it won't be in the hands of the scientists, however well-intentioned, uh, to decide whether it's going to be deployed. It will be somebody else. And it might not be somebody with a good moral framework. We know what a lot of the real showstoppers are that would make deployment a really horrible idea. Uh, and uh, there is really no chance that the kind of research that's being proposed would either eliminate the known risk or give us any way of addressing the unknown risks that will not become really evident until there's a full-scale deployment. Meanwhile, it's a huge distraction uh, from the essential task that the world is just getting down to, which is decarbonizing the world economy. So there's this notion that uh, that solar geoengineering is something we can keep as a break glass in case of emergency uh, response, uh, just in case uh, we, we, we don't actually manage to decarbonize the world economy. That's what I call the plan B framing. But that's a complete fallacy because if we don't decarbonize the world economy, then each year more carbon dioxide will accumulate into the in the atmosphere giving you more heat trapping effect, then each year you'll need to deploy more and more solar geoengineering until something goes wrong. And each year you're then accumulating a risk of a bigger and bigger catastrophic warming from termination shock. So it's not a plan B. And it would be nice if there were a plan B for the climate crisis, but the sad fact of the matter is there is no plan B. We just have to decarbonize and do that as fast as we possibly can. Thank you.